I'm going to slip in some things from the, the course that I teach because we didn't get to to get to everything uh, yesterday and some people wanted me to finish. So let me just do, I'm not going to go through the course, but just one part of it. One of the things that I've done in my class that turned out to be really successful is I have uh, classes that are about this big and um, uh, as you know, some one, uh, lectures are inaccessible to lots of people. People with ADHD, people with uh, language trouble, uh, people with uh, um, uh, people, second language learners, uh, lots of people, lectures don't work at all. And uh, people are sick and people can't take notes because they're physically disabled. So one of the things probably you do here also in university is people are paid to be note takers so that there's notes available for people who need notes from lecture. Well, I think that's a colossal waste of time and money, um, largely because note takers are not usually very good. Um, so I was trying to think, how can I make the lecture more university design? It's a standard lecture, which is, again, not a great instrument. <coughs> great for some people, terrible for others. Um, but how can I get it so that it's a bit more accessible? So a number of things happen. The whole thing is videotaped, so you can watch it slower, faster, watch it at home. It's available an hour later on the web, so that you can do the whole, see the whole lecture again. Okay, that's not that interesting. And almost no students ever listen to a lecture again. You've heard me once, you don't want to hear me again. <laughs> and so, so that doesn't happen. But the second thing that I did was actually something that is, is really neater, and it shows UDL. Um, what I do is I ask five people, so it would be a group like this, and every night that is, there's a lecture, five people are official note takers. It's just part of being in the course. You have to take notes once during the course. And um, the key thing is, and here's where technology is key, is that within uh, 24 hours, but I actually give a little leeway as you'll see, um, you have to put your notes up so all of your classmates can see them. Okay? So after lecture, there's a video available of the lecture, and within a day or two, there's five people's notes of the lecture. All right? Now the question is, these are and I want to point out that this is, all of them are Harvard graduate students in education. So this is a very, what's the word, homogeneous group in some way. You know, I mean, I got the typical disabilities and stuff, but this is not a wild array of people. <laughs> what I want you to see is what kind of notes they take. Okay, so I'm going to show you notes uh, from, uh, so same, roughly the same lecture, although I fudged in one case because I wanted to show the variety. So what most people think the notes are going to look like um, is this, OK? So this is one graduate student's notes. And you can see, what was I talking about? Yeah, I was talking about exactly this. It was how, what great timing. Um, talking about the same topic we're talking about today. Um, and Ruth, you heard about Ruth and perfect pitch, blah, blah, blah. Um, so here's Michelle Berkowitz's notes. Beautiful outline, um, just like you know, her English teacher would have been proud. Uh, bulleted points, you know, da da. She's in a problem of da 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 da. Of uh, upper motor neuron stuff. You blah blah blah. Br a break, da da da. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. This is what most people think notes are like, because that's what your English teacher thought notes looked like. Um, oops. Uh, Oh, I guess I can just click this, can I? Get back. Am I up there? Yeah. So let's look at somebody else's notes. So this is a classmate, same class. And he realizes, huh, these notes are going to be on the web. So they're native on the web, why not use the web? So he puts them, and everything here, he's got tons of links out to other things. Now, some of you would say, this is kissing the apple here for the uh, professor. <laughs> uh, and it definitely is. But in, in terms of the theme for today, you know, he's networked. He said, well, there's a lot of sources on the web. So he connects to everything on the web. And it's full of, you know, there's slides you've seen. So he's connecting and, and actually embedding this in knowledge, which is fabulous. And I get to use it next year, which is fabulous. <laughs> Um, um, Ms. Kim, again, same, same notes, 
but this all gets filtered through their brains. Look how he, hers is. Hers is, dear classmates. She writes a letter. It's not an outline. It just, there, here's my takeaways. So she says, it's like a travelogue. It's like her journey, like it's a postcard back. And, and it's completely her own take. She doesn't try to be literal with what I did, but it was like I was on vacation and here's what I heard. And she just writes a letter. <laughs> you know, and, and it's all just paragraphs and you know, she says, you know, in the middle, well, it got kind of boring and I stopped paying attention here. Uh, you know, but it got, you know. Anyway, so an epistle sent to, uh, sent to her classmates. Sorry, this switching back and forth. I don't know why that, oh, was that showing up? Maybe it's just what I'm showing up here. Um, but more interestingly is that over the time, more and more diversity starts to come out as people see, oh, there isn't one way to take notes. So usually somewhere along during the course of the class, someone will come out like Miss Goldsmith's. Whoop, why can't they click on that? There we go. Oh, it's hitting that. How do I get, how do I stop from hitting that? I've done this before, but, oh, cancel. I don't want to do that. Ah. <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry, I made this slide in a way that I can't quite get to that number four, and this is one of the ones I really want to show you. I, I should be able to do this without clicking. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I don't want to take the time to go in the slide. I, I'll, uh, I'll show it to you later. <laughs> oh, there it is. So she is more inclined non-verbally. And so she does the whole lecture in three drawings. And she does it very well, and it's beautiful. And, uh, you know, and she just is doing, you know, and um, the other, I'm not going to do that opening again, but I've got the three slides, and it becomes more and more visual, and actually, then people see it, and they go, wow, her notes are really better than the outline, who knew, okay? Not for everybody, but for a lot of people, and then more people start to draw and do things like that, because they go, oh, what we're trying to do is convey what happened in the lecture, and... Um, uh, there's lots of ways to do that. Let's do, this is the one that was most helpful to me as a faculty member. Um, and this is the one where the guy called me and said, okay, I'm not quite done. I need a, another couple days. And I said, okay. <laughs> so what he did was he took the entire lecture and spent days going through the New Yorker cartoons, all of which are on the web, <laughs> and illustrated all of my points with cartoons. <laughs> so I'm not going to have you read the whole thing, but it's just, um, it'll take a second, oh, here we go. So just cartoons. He puts a few words in there, but he finds a cartoon to make the point. Isn't that amazing? This guy looking for a good grade, I grant. Um, but the great thing is, the nice thing is he is co-constructing the lecture with me through his own brain and I have a new lecture, a better one. <laughs> um, because we've co-constructed it. And then, then what, of course, then quickly people start to realize, like, like Jeff took the uh, slide of Grace and I on the motorcycle last night, people realize, eh, pens and paper and all this. Uh -huh. So sooner or later, someone does this. And I thought, by the way, I mistook this. I thought the person was not paying attention in class and was really getting aggravated because I don't know who's taking note on any, any particular day. So here is, um, I gotta read you this because you can't see it. Hi, my name's Chris. <laughs> so this is an, another kind of epistle, except that He's got his little uh, iPhone, so he just takes a picture of himself. <laughs> That's me. In case you missed it or simply want to relive it, here's what happened on Tuesday night. I'm wear it's all about him. I'm wearing a blue shirt. 
you know, and this is, you know, this is the Facebook generation. I'm taking my shirt off now. You know, it could be anything. Uh, I'm saying New Jersey, Parma Central. I stole it from my mom's laundry basket. I'm also wearing jeans and boots. Dr. Rose enters the room at 702. Okay, and then he just takes pictures and whenever they get good at this, so whenever I say, okay, now the most important point is, and up comes the cell phone and people just press record. <laughs> and then they don't have to write any notes at all. Um, but he just takes pictures. There's me in the uh, lecture hall. That's his ginger ale, uh, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> so you get the idea. What's fabulous about it, and the first time I did it, it knocked me out too. Um, and it's because it's such a perfect UDL exercise. Because you think you gave the same lecture to everybody. <laughs> you think that it, this is my lecture. But it's not your lecture. It is 200 people's lecture. And the things, it's, it's not only did they express it differently, but if you really read them, they got completely different things out of it. Not just that they were mistaken, but that they were in fact taking it in through their brains, which are very different, and they took in very different things. So it's a rich exercise, it's fun, and the students uh, like to see each other's notes, and I recommend it to you that are uh, teaching, um, uh, teaching in college and universities, and they say, you should have a paid note taker say, I have a better way to take notes.